I'm just going to get out of the way. Sister Kathy Colbert is coming tonight with her testimony and the burden that's on her heart tonight. And she's going to come and share that with us. Sister Kathy. He 
took care of him and he paid for him. He did everything that could possibly be done to help that person, that right stranger that he didn't even know. That's what he did. That's a perfect picture of salvation <laughs> and a perfect picture of God's love. That's what he done for us. Right, right. You, you sang it just a few minutes ago, and some of your songs touched it too. Us and our perfect mess that we made, <laughs> that we made, mm -hmm. right. he came along saw the need and did you preach on it the other night? Somebody preached on it the other night. I don't remember which one did. About him praying, not my will but thy will be done. He didn't want to die. That fleshly part of, of Jesus did not want to die and suffer that sacrifice for us but he knew that was the only way. So he shared that perfect love, right. that blood on Calvary that we might live. This is the example that's set here in the Good Samaritan. But this all this parable stemmed all from uh, some verses that came before. And y'all don't have to stand for this. But going back up in verse 25 through 29, it says, And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said unto him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? You know, they were big old law in those days. And he answered and said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. Mm -hmm. And he answered and said unto him, Thou hast answer, answered right, this do, and thou shalt live. But he willing to justify himself, he's looking for a loophole, said unto Jesus, and who is my neighbor? And the Lord answering that question went into this parable about this certain uh, man that was left by the side of the road half dead and what he should do. He was finding a way out. He was just like the priest and the Levi. The Levi, actually. Because he too didn't want to get his hands dirty. He wanted to do just enough. Maybe pay his money. You know, make it ease his conscience just a little bit and go on his merry way. But the Lord had other things in mind for it. In verse 36 and 37 then, it says, Which now of these three thinkest thou was a neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? And he said, He that showed mercy on him. Then said Jesus unto him, Go and do thou likewise. Right. This is in red and right. Go and do thou likewise. Right. To me, that's important. To go and do thou likewise. And that's what, these that you got, this restoration place, that's what we're trying to do, is go and do thou likewise. We're trying to follow the commandments of the Lord, of loving your neighbor as yourself. And your neighbor's not just who's sitting beside you on these pews. It's not just your neighbor that lives beside you. It's anybody that you find in need. Right. The Lord went about from town to town. He didn't even have places to lay his hands. The Bible scripture talks about that. At times, he trusted and went in, and there goes that trust again that we talked about before service. He trusted his heavenly Father long as, uh, enough to know that he was going to supply his his needs as he went. Right. Him being part of that, that Godhead, Jesus as the head, Jesus is the head. There's not three. There's just one. But him in his fleshly form had to have trust. He was still in the flesh. Right, right, right. And that's what we got to do. we got to step out in faith and help. And not everybody. I told the ladies, I'm a little crybaby. So I'm, I, it's a miracle. Y'all know it's a miracle that I hadn't burst out of here. But we want to try to help these people that are hurting here in Pontotoc County. And a lot of people think there's not people hurting in Pontotoc County. Wayne Moore. I don't think he'd care for me calling his name. Just in the last month has found a man living in one of his trailers on his parking lot in this evening. He called us. What can you do? Well, of course, our building's not ready. So we, I said, well, I we can put him up in the motel for a few days. I mean, that's just a band-aid, but we'll do what we can do. You know. So we give the man three days stay. He give him a job. He helped him after those three days find somebody that worked with him there to allow him to stay with him. See, you know what we're talking about, don't you? And was able to
to put him in that situation and get him back on his feet. He's got a car, he has a job, and now he has his own place. A lot of water under the bridge, a 
was a lot of romance and stuff. At 16, I was date raped. And I never thought that that instant in my life would cause such tragedy for the future. Because by something that's here, and no matter how much you push it to the back side of your mind, it's always here. So future relationships, I never could hold one because I felt dirty. I felt unclean. I felt unloved. So I chose men, the type of men that I pursued a relationship with. I chose the type that I knew I couldn't get into a serious relationship with. Even my two husbands. Types that were needy. Men. I mean, they really, uh, I thought I could fix them. I had that mama mentality with them that I can fix this situation. So I went through life like that, uh, and still single to this day because of it. You know what I'm saying? The Lord has finally healed me of that. But it started out this battle in my mind. And with the second marriage, uh, with him, he was a precious person, but he had drug problems and alcohol problems, and it was very browbeating, like I was talking about earlier. You, you never knew, you could never do good enough. There was always something less than. I was always Miss Holier Than Thou was his term that he used for me, Miss Holier Than Thou. And because of what he was going through mentally himself, until the point that he held me in the house one night. And if I had not succumbed to what he was trying to have me do, he would have killed me. He would have killed me. I, there's not a doubt in my mind that he would have killed me. Because he was not him. He was overtaken by the spirit that was on him at that time. And not every church you could stand in and say that. But I know y'all know that that is a serious thing and that is a truth thing. That people can get to the point that they can be totally overtaken by a spirit. Right. And that night I, I honestly feared for my life. And when I did get out of that situation the next morning, I, I was able to go to work. He had passed out and I was able to go to work. And um, I said right then, I said, there's no going back. Because if I go back, I won't live to see another day. My children will bury me. Mine is not the only situation like that. Mine's not the only one. There is ladies and men. You don't think men go through that kind of abuse, but men do go through that kind of abuse. There's some women that's just as mean as some men are. And you stay in. Part of it is thinking, like I said, that you can fix things. Part of it is because you love them so much that you think, well, love will conquer all. And sometimes love don't conquer all. So some of the women and men that we are seeing right now are products of their past that hasn't been dealt with. And it's a very delicate situation that they're in. And if you don't try to help them delicately, you can push them further away than what you can help them because they've got their guard up. I, I don't know, uh, I've got a kind of a blank right here, but I don't know what to say outside of the fact is that there are hurting situations that need a God intervention. Right. And I guess that's good enough to be said. That's kind of the final word with it. Is that there has got to be a way that you can tell these people, you are fearfully and wonderfully made like a total ladies. You're worth something. You may be a diamond in the rug, but there's a God that can take that, mold it, shape it, and make it into what it's meant to be used for. Because everybody sitting in this room, we don't know of all these people sitting in here. Somebody's hurting them. 
You can deny it all you want to, but somebody's hurting you. Somebody has been through mental, physical, spiritual abuse enough that they're hurting. And they don't know the way out. But I want to tell you, there is a God that will sweep down into your situation. He will wrap his arms around you. And it don't have to be physically, but you will feel him just like it is. All right. And he will let you know everything is going to be all right. It may take time. It may take prayer. Over and over prayer. My healing didn't come overnight. And I still deal with issues. Because, like I said, it's a battlefield of the mind. If anybody's ever read that book by Joyce Meyer, it's a battlefield of the mind. It's an awesome book to read. And it is the truth that it begins in the mind. And where the mind goes, the body follows. You think on something long enough, whether it's negative or positive, you're going to follow through and act upon it. And I acted upon it for years because I would get myself in a drunk super long enough to pick up that man in the bar and go home with him and wake up sometimes the next morning not even knowing who that was laying beside me. Now that's pitiful, y'all. I know that sounds harsh, but you're adults in here. And the truth is the truth because I was hurting and I needed a healing. And I still battle of feeling less than because that is something that takes time because you, you, if when you're put down so much over and over and over again, that's what you think you are. You think you're that. But you're not. Everybody in here was designed for heavenly purpose. And some of us have found our calling, and some of us haven't. You know, I was in my 40s before I knew what God had called me to. I was 50 before I surrend actually surrendered to it. I was already working on it before I actually surrendered to it. But if you think you were put here just to be somebody's mom or dad, or to work at the job that you work at during the day or at night, you are sadly mistaken. That might suffice what you need to take care of here on our earth, but it is not going to take care of what God called you to do for the kingdom. Right. There is a kingdom work to be done, and we've got a short time to do it. I'm looking so forward to the study of the end times. But more than that, I look forward to the word every time it's brought, because it brings life. The word brings life. And it brings healing. Restoration Place is the name of our, our of our shelter. We like very little having it done if we can get our plumbing situated. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
we give them one-time assistance unless it's a serious, serious situation. We're not domestic violence, even though we have took some women and placed them in at the hotel for our overnight stay when it was a, such a bad situation that they had to get out because that gets you into some deep things when you start dealing with domestic abuse. Because we do have a place in Chippewa that's set up for that. So we try to unless, to point them in that direction unless they just have to, you know, have an emergency stay. Uh, we're nonprofit. None of the money goes to anything but what we do it for. It's tax deductible. We're trying to get churches and uh, clubs and whoever we individuals involved that are donate thirty dollars a month to our cause. Thirty that's a dollar a day. Most churches can do thirty dollars a month. We're trying to get that support for a year until we can get some grants and stuff coming in to get on our feet. Not everybody can, not everybody wants to. And that's okay because we know that the God that we serve is going to bring what we need when we need it. He has. Well, when we've got down to our last dollar and have a bill come in for a hotel bill or something, and within a day or so after we get that bill, somebody has walked up with a check or the real you know, bank has called us and said somebody made a deposit on your account. God is more than right. Right. He is. He's our Jehovah Jireh. He's our provider. He's our Jehovah Nisi. As the song says, he reigns in victory. So if we stick with him, we can't help but be victorious. Our life is meant to have joy, joy unspeakable and full of glory. And it's, you're going to find the most of it in helping others. Like I said, not everybody's called to do this. But you're called to do something. You know, we put a paintbrush in your hand, it doesn't matter. So I hope that y'all will read this, pray over it, get you some anointing oil and spray it all over it, lay your hands on it, and go to town. We need the support of Pontiac County. Right. We desperately need y'all's support. We have got people that have slept under bridges that we went to. People that slept in cars. I had one lady that at the beginning of when we started helping and I'll close with this. She had two children. Um, she called us for some assistance and we put her up. I even went as far as my mother and stepdad let her stay at their house for several days. And, um, she got up there trying to find a job and stuff and tried to enroll the kids and Decided that she was going to have to go to Nashville, so she pulled the kids back out with a school call, um, DHS. They took her children. I told the ladies about this before. It's a horrible, horrible thing to see a mother lose her children. It's very devastating. And her to say, what can we do? What can I do? I was just trying to get them stable and they didn't give me a chance. What do you tell a mother or a father in that situation? What do you tell them? Words don't work. Words don't come for situations like that. <coughs> she has contacted me in the last little bit. She finally got her job and after months, and I've been doing months, foster care. She now has her children back. She has been my home. And she has a job. Seems to be doing really well living in South Carolina. So, you know, maybe it took that crisis her getting in that situation to be able to say, hey, I got to do something and I got to do something quick. And you, you see DHS, DHS is that those children were living in the car from pillar to post and no security. You know, they were doing their job. But it still rips a person's heart out, even if it's not your children, to see that happen to somebody. If y'all have any comments or any questions, I'll be glad to try to ask, answer anything that, you know, that y'all have. But right, I appreciate
Thank you. 